Welcome back, friends. Um, so today, um, so I, I'm not a parent. I don't have children of my own. I don't have babies in the house. And most of my family and friends' babies are older now. So it's been a little while since I've held an infant and been around infants. But call me crazy. I don't really think this is the right posture and proportions for an infant. So today, bless his little heart, this is the buggy baby again, so help me, I'm going to get this figured out. We're gonna, we're gonna change his body again. So, are we ready for this? We're ready for this. We're going to do some more, some more tweaking of things for this poor little guy. I got him another body. Um, so we're going to get him undressed. We're going to take his head off. We're going to try to figure out the new body and we're going to get through this together. Okay. Okay. All right. Be right back. All right. I got the doll's head off and it went about as exciting as last time. Uh, I, I just doing it and there's no real good way to show how to do it safely. So if you're a younger person, make sure to ask for help because trying to pop that zip tie that's around the neck of these reborn style dolls or cuddle dolls is a bear. Like it's, it's crazy. Um, it's a very like thin zip tie. And just, just be super careful. So the new body I have is a hair smaller. I got the 16 inch body. This was newborn size. And with his head on, the total length was maybe 20 inches. And I felt that was a bit big for his head. So I got one size smaller, I think. This is from a different company. And it's, <laughs> we're gonna have to put some pieces together here so you're it'll be it'll be it'll be something <laughs> i haven't done this step before either so it is a day of new things the kit did come with its own zip tie so that's a bonus i do have more zip ties just in case i had to order those off etsy this came from an actual company and i did read in the description it said there was some assembly like these are the the joints that comes with it. Oh, oh, this is gonna be fun. Um, the direction, like this is all that it came with. There's no real directions. And on the website, it just said they put little pencil marks where you're supposed to put the little hole for the joint. So I don't know if you can see that light, light pencil mark where you're supposed to cut a little hole to put it through. Um, so we have arms, we got two arms, that's good. We got two arms. We got two legs and these have the little pencil marks as well. Oh my goodness. And I'm guessing like on the inside, like seams to the inside. And we have the little body. And if you notice, none of this is stuffed. None of this is stuffed. So we're going to have to get creative. So I'm going to use some stuffing from that pillow that I used to fill. So once again, special thanks to my buddy Lori for making these awesome travel pillows back in high school slash early college. I've, I've kept it since. I love it. And now I'm using it. Uh, she used heat set like tape to sew it and it's just been rocked but I still have it I still have the fabric just in case because I'm a hoarder and I know the stuffing is pretty clean because it's been mine I've been kind of keeping tabs of it over the years so thank you Lori your pillow's coming in handy um even now so let's I don't even know where to start let's stuff I guess the lay well do I want to put the oh there's even marks on the body um where you're supposed to like connect the joints so that's something would have been nice maybe do I put the I can always put the joints in because there's no directions 
on how to really do this. Um, like, it's not like, put this in, then put that in, and then put the other thing in. So we have these pieces. Um, there's different types of pieces that are in here. Let me, let me just, okay, so we got, okay, let's, let's look at this scientifically. Let's see what parts we have. Oh, I jiggled you. So we have this type, this type of part. So like the little peg looking thing. We have that type. Ooh, let's put all those. So if there's four limbs, there should be four of these. Okay. Next, we have a part that looks kind of like this. It's got like, to focus, it's got like a ridge on there and oops and like a little center that has ew, sorry these spoky little little dashes or little cuts inside the circle so there's a part that looks like this and let's see let's get you focused in again that makes me kind of blurry it makes my eyeballs hurt so i think we have four of those and then we have a piece that looks like, like this. It looks like a washer. It doesn't have any ridges. It's really smooth. And we have four of those. So it looks like, I'm just stopping to think for a minute. Okay. So if these, okay, so if this goes through like there, we'll make a little hole, if that goes through there, then I guess we put the washer, the washer one down, and then this piece with the lip like snaps it into place, does that make sense? Yeah, because then this would, oh my gosh. Ooh, there we go. This is fun. So these would snap together, but since we want the to move, that's what the washer is for. So it can snap and still have, okay. We're going to go with that and then we'll see how it goes. And I suppose there's more how-to videos, like how to put together a cloth body from this company, but... I didn't think to Google that beforehand. So we're gonna wing it. Because ideally, like in my mind, I shouldn't have to look up a video to try to assemble a product. Especially if I'm trying to do it on my own. Like, I shouldn't have to look up additional instructions if it doesn't come with it. So, okay, and if you notice, I'm not saying the name of the company. If you wanna know, message me. I'm on Instagram, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes here. So let's, let's partially stuff some of this. Let's partially stuff some of that. Um, and then we will go to trying to assemble the mechanisms. We'll start there. And I will show you how it turns out. But I'm gonna do a quick little cut and I'll do some of the boring stuff like stuffing this stuff and then I'll take a look at the joints and then I'll let you know what I find out. While I'm stuffing here, this is becoming a pain. Like there's a little Velcro pocket and my filler keeps wanting to get stuck on that little Velcro piece. So if marketing or whoever, engineering would put like the soft piece of the Velcro there, that would make life a little easier, I think, because this top piece, you know, while you're stuffing a majority of the limbs, you can hold back and then stuff. And then you definitely do need like a chopstick. I'm using this little hair comb thing, pit, oops. Um, just because I had that laying around because I used this little comb on the dolls. But you really have to like, to get it clear to the bottom, you definitely do need something to like 
help coax it down to like the toes and the fingers and stuff. Eh, there we go. And like to just kind of help it reach clear to the end. So you definitely do need a little something. And I suppose you could pack this as tight or as loose as you want, but I think I kind of want, want um, some snug limbs. So some ta <laughs> some rather firm, firm limbs. Um, so I'll fill this most of the way up and I am going to leave like this little area without filling um, just to make the connections a little easier to kind of do. But I'm going to stuff a majority of the leg here, but I kind of show wanted to show you what I was up to. All right, something else I'm noticing. When you're kind of getting close to like wrapping up or what you feel you might be done with a limb, pick them both up and like feel them to make sure you <laughs> double check that you stuffed them about the same because you don't want like one big arm and one little arm. And I was kind of debating too if I wanted to stuff more or not because it's only so wide but we'll see but yeah make sure you kind of feel your limbs to make sure they kind of feel equal um as you're kind of doing this too and i also noticed the space that's up here let me show you what i noticed um these joints take up most of what's up here kind of like that so um I'm debating on, I'll probably use this piece to shove through and then stuffing, like don't pierce this side, just one hole. And then this goes through and then I can stuff behind this peg, if that makes any sense. So don't put the hole all the way through, put the hole just on one side and shove this piece through. That's my game plan. Just so you know, just that's my game plan. We're going to see how it goes. Another thought. So I was looking at the body because my next, I stuffed all the limbs. I went to the body and then I kind of stopped because these holes, I'm going to have to mount the legs before I stuff the body. Because if I waited to and stuffed the body first, then it'd be kind of a pain in the butt to try to get back to the legs. If that makes any sense, I'd have to dig through all the stuffing to get down there. Focus. Come on now. There we go. Because the body has tick marks too. So I might install the legs and the arms and then stuff the body. I think that's what I'll have to do. Okay, next. All right, let me share with you where I'm at. Okay, so I got the joint through. I just used, um, like I said, you got to be careful used one of these and kind of like gently scratched its way through. Um, I'll maybe do a close up when I work on another limb. But so yeah, so I have the peg side through the limb itself. And I'm, I'm stuffing it. I can see why they wouldn't want the hard Velcro on the top. This would be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, and then I stuffed behind here. I didn't go all the way through. I just went through the one side. And then I'm laying the Velcro shut. And I kind of, as I was doing this, and like just when you think you're full enough, add one more little boop in there. Add one more little plug of cotton. And then, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. So there's this. So this is one leg. Let me work on the other stuff. All right, let me show you kind of how I made that hole. So if you see, there's a pencil mark on there that came from from the, the people that I bought this through. I don't know if they're a manufacturer or seller or what, but I'm using my little thing. I'm just cutting a little, little bit of a hole. Just kind of running the blade back and forth on that little hole. Cause I don't want to make it too big and have the joint be too loose and have like wobbly limbs that don't want to stick. It's hard to see through the camera. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So it's kind of the beginning of the peeking through of that plastic joint. There we go. And then what I'll do, I just gingerly like shove it. There we go. And then after that's through, 
I'll stuff all this and then feel it again to make sure my limbs are equal and like feeling. So yeah, but that's how I did that. Okay, so I have two legs I think are done. The Velcro is nice because if I did want to go back and stuff some more in there, I might be able to do it. His might not be, so I'm, I'm trying to act like I'm not be able to go back. Um, the next question that I'm contemplating is the washer, like the what I'm calling the washer piece. This is kind of like a pig piece. Um, so the piece that does not have that lip on there, I'm debating on where I want to install that. Um, so I'm trying to picture in my head because um, the piece, this piece, this locking piece definitely goes inside the doll to hold the leg on. The question is, do I want the washer on this side or that side? And I think it's this side because the question is, where do I want, like, where's the friction going to be? And do I want plastic touching fabric or do I want fabric touching fabric? And I don't think I want fabric touching fabric because that'll just grind away the fabric. Does that make sense? So if I have this washer in between the two fabrics and then lock it into place, it gives it a smooth surface rather than a fabric surface to put the friction on and this smooth surface might cut down friction and la la la. So the rubbing will be less if it's plastic between the two fabrics versus fabric between fabric, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but I'll show you again once I get her all put together. I'm not quite sure guess it would be this side towards the outside because that's a smoother surface than that side so this would snap in that's what I'm thinking okay I'll just, okay I'll, I'll I'll let you know what I figure out all right so the body I'm using the peg ends to kind of like gauge how to cut this little hole and for the body it's kind of hard to do that but what I'm going to use I'm sorry is the end of the thing that I was using to stuff it and see if that will help me cut these little holes. So then I'll put this down in here. I'll line it up with the pencil mark and then kind of do like I did with the legs. And that way I only try to cut as big of a hole as I need to. All right, that's, I'm gonna attempt that. All right, so that's what I did. I used my little, little cutter to kind of like shave away the fabric just enough to shove the tiny end of my little thing through. All right, double check. You got your right and left correct. So all this stuff goes on the inside. So it'll be like this. Let me get my washer ready on this leg before I forget. Is there a way to those? And what I'm doing on these is I'm putting the flat side, see it kind of curves and then it goes, I'm putting the flat side towards the leg and this rounded side will be towards the body. So then the body, there's the chest and where the head goes, that's the butt. Um, so then I'll go to my hole that I just made here by the butt and shove this in there, hopefully, in theory, okay, gingerly, because this kit, this kit that I'm assembling now, it cost me like 40 bucks, just a little less, if that tells you anything. So 40 bucks and I have to stuff it and I have to assemble it myself. Um, let me quick give this a little gumption off camera. <laughs> Shove it in there. Hold on. 
All right, so this is what I got so far. So this is the outside of the body. There's that little washer. There's our pig going through. Now what locks the pig in place, I'm guessing, is this type of washer. And I'm not gonna go, this I feel is upside down. I'm pretty sure, because we want a smooth surface for it to slide on and move. So I'm guessing it goes this way and then it locks into place. Sorry, it's keeping in mind the only instructions were on the website where I ordered it. The box did not come with any instruction. There might, I can't remember if there was a video that I was supposed to watch on the website because it just came with a box with this and done. Like there's no directions included. So we're just gonna say a prayer and just wing it, right? So let's lock, lock this leg into place. That sounds, that sounds like commitment. We're going to make sure we have a smooth surface because that's what the joint's gliding on. And we're just going to, there we go. And we hopefully, there we go. That feels, that feels right. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Did I get the right leg on? Oh God, that was close. Yes. Toes pointing towards the chest. Toes and chest. Okay. So let me, let me get this other leg on. We have legs. All right, so now that we got it put together, I'll kind of show you um, what this mechanism kind of does. See how it, um, oh, it might be easier. This is how I did it. Flat side. And then on the inside, this is what he looks like. And all right, so I'm gonna get the arms figured out and on i'll follow a similar process as i kind of did for the legs um it's kind of nice too being that there's a little compartment if you wanted to put wire in here i could later that'd be pretty easy to make them like a mini armature makeshift armature kind of thing um okay let me knock the arms out and get the body stuffed i might use the weighting material from the torso of the old body because I don't really have any weighting material outside of rocks. And I don't want to put rocks in my doll. That's weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to use what's in the torso of that doll to see if I can get it to look right in this doll. And we'll see. All right. All right. One more time with the arms. So make sure you got the chest forward. That's the little wrinkly part by the head. And we're just going to shove this through once again, flat side. All right, flat slide towards the arm. We're shoving this through the tiny, tiny hole we made with our little cutter jobber. Okay. Making sure it's flat and flush. All right, pretty good. And then slidey part flat on flat, this raised part goes into the body, and then we gingerly snap that together. <laughs> All right, and then we have, we have arm. All right, ready to see where we're at so far? I did put some filler in the bottom, or some polyfill, because I wanted him to have a soft little booty. Does anyone else follow creepy core and folklore? Little booty, shake your booties. That's fun. I like that one. They're on the Instagram. It's an author. So, all right. So let's let's jump in to this body and see what the waiting material looks like. Because I want to try to use it for this one if possible. Alrighty, the waiting material in that one is pretty standard for like your reborn dolls. It's a, a fine grit, almost like sandy texture. It's very fine inside a couple of nylons. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove this in the smaller body and see what happens and see if I can maybe mold it a little better and try to keep some of the floppiness of the doll body. I don't know. This is the sculpting part, right? This is the artistic part of the artistic. Um, all right, we'll see how it goes. 
All right, I got the filler in there. Yay, or the waiting material anyway. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see if I could use this polyfill and try to like create a layer of padding around the, the little bag in here so it doesn't feel as sandy to me. Yeah, so it doesn't feel so sandy. I'm gonna try to put a layer of polyfill around it on the inside. All right, I wanna show you what I was doing. I'm using my handy dandy little poker again to kind of spread out the polyfill around that bag of waiting material. And once I think I get that feeling pretty good, like I keep testing the little body to make sure it doesn't, it feels okay to me. I think it does. It feels a little sandy right here yet. The back, the back is pretty good. Um, and when I go to get, I'm going to fix this part here. And when I go back, I think my problem last time while the doll, why the doll was sitting so erect is that I had too much pat, like fluffy stuff close to its neck. Cause I kind of want a little bit of like the floppy feel. So I think I just have to be careful and not get too much of this filling on the inside. I think that's my game plan. Okay, let's do a head, a head trial run. So I don't have the zip tie installed yet, but I'm gonna try this far. His arms do look a little skinny. I might try to shove some more. I don't know if I can fit any more though. I think the body size looks about right. Hmm. Hmm, I'll show you kind of a comparison down here. Let me figure this out. You lay this the empty body because we took the filling out. There's one. And then, oh my gosh, arms everywhere. And then let me lay this one next to it, kind of, sort of, so you can see the, the size comparison of the two. Ooh. So yeah, it's a slightly smaller body, slightly smaller limbs. <coughs> oh, excuse me. My goodness, bless me. Um, I got like polyfill and grainy sand everywhere. Um, so that's kind of what it, what it looks like now. Off, right off the bat, it does look like a smaller body, but I gotta put clothes and stuff on it yet. So, well, we'll see. We'll keep plugging along here. We'll see how it shakes out. All right, head trial run two. So, it looks like, make sure your trial run, that's what I learned. Looks like I'm, I don't have a floppy head on him, which is telling me that I might have too much polyfill in his body because I want him to like have more of like a forehead scrunchiness, like a forward scrunchiness. And he's not able to do that because I have like too much in his belly region. So let's see what that does. Alrighty. I took, I took a handful of stuffing out of his belly region. Let's see, let's do a trial run again. Yep, no. It's not quite scrunching like I want to. It looks like there's too much stuffing right there now. Ugh. Ooh wee. All right, I got him dressed. Um, some things that I noted as I was dressing him is his, he went down a size in his diaper. He was wearing a size one. Now he's in a newborn. It fits kind of high on his waist, but I think that's okay because it helps hide that sandy feeling um, from having to take out all that polyfill in the process. The long sleeved onesie that he's wearing, I did size down to a preemie just because I like the snugger fit of like that base layer. This is the same sleeper that he was in when we first started all this. And it fits him, I think, much nicer. It's got a looser fit that's a little more, a little more rational. It was pretty tight on him, and this is a newborn size. And you can kind of see he's got a little more wiggle room now in his arms in this. Let's check out his legs. I, I have a pair of socks on him too. And even the legs on this body, they're right there. 
so that's not too bad that's not too bad at all and just kind of just picking him up and carrying him around in my office here as I was getting set up for all this fun stuff he feels a lot better he doesn't feel as chonky and let's look at his posture again let me make sure you guys are all centered so now he does have a little bit of a straight back but it's not as dramatic he's got a little bit more of a scrunch to him he's not sitting up you know as high let me get him up a little higher oh geez see he's floppy again he's got a little more of a flop there's not a whole lot of weight in his head that's okay just he sits a little better now there he goes we focus and this is the franklin sculpt the head and the head was made in 2018 by ella's enchanted cradle yeah so oh this little guy and i suppose we could do a naming video i've been thinking about his name for a while now focus oh my goodness let's zoom in and i think in honor of him being the buggy baby he was the cuddle baby that right now that video is one of my most popular videos it's at a little over 500k views which is exciting and so in honor of his beginnings with his buggy beginnings i think i'm gonna name him james like james and the giant peach because he lived with bugs for a while but it turned out good in the end so this is baby james and if you've noticed i have a slumberkin back there i totally did not pay like retail price for that i found it at the goodwill <laughs> yeah so it was only three four bucks um but anyway i thought it was kind of fun but yeah so meet baby james we went through on went through quite the journey today thank you all for joining us um oh before i leave before i leave before i leave i want to talk a little teachable moment here about price because i don't know about you but i'm new to this and when i would see cuddle babies um, I would think, why are they like 400 bucks? Why are they like 400 bucks? And having gone through this process, wow. Um, just the base layer of the parts and pieces was like 40 bucks. That's not counting the polyfill. That's not counting the weighting material, whatever that would have cost. I just happen to have it on hand. And then the time so it took me probably like an hour or two between things just mussing around with it so 40 bucks plus like 20 bucks an hour that's 40 50 60 60 to 80 bucks a time like you can kind of see how an assembled body just the body can be like 80 dollars plus then the cost of the art on his head and that takes a lot of time and resources as well so now i have a better understanding on why cuddle babies are priced the way that they are so i thought i'd share that reflection with you so yeah but yes like i was saying earlier thank you so much for joining me today i hope you learned a little bit and i know i sure learned a lot so thank you all for coming along with me i really appreciate you and your time and have a great rest of your day 